it should result in increased revenues for them, increased revenues for your business. And of course, this should allow you to scale your business because you're being much more efficient. One of the ways businesses achieve their strategy is to leverage their partners or partner network, whether they be resellers, distributors, uh, installers, system integrators, etc. Uh, and one of the best ways to do that is to use a partner relationship management system, PRM. So why does it make a difference? Why should companies who don't have such a system put one in place? Or if you have an old one, maybe improve upon it. It all comes down to making it super easy to do business with you. You want to have extremely simple engagement with your partner network and what better way to do it with a self-service partner portal. So regarding partner portals, there's a lot that can be done uh, for all kinds of partners. Uh, what are the best practices or core features that really should be there uh, at its core? Uh, and let's start with everything regarding purchasing. Yeah, so your partners expect to be able to come in your portal, place a purchase, generate a quote, access past orders, consult ordering status, shipping status, or maybe just simply looking at past invoices. And what are the features specifically related to sales? Two things, lean management and opportunity management. From a lean management perspective, maybe you have a lead that you need to assign to one of your partners. So how do you assign it? Who do you assign it to depending on territory, specialty? And the opposite is true as well. Maybe your partner network wants to submit the lead of their own. Same thing for opportunities. Maybe you have an opportunity that you would like one of your partners to address and take on the sales cycle. Or the opposite also, maybe one of your partners wants to submit a specific opportunity and maybe get exclusivity for a certain period of time to go after this particular uh, sales opportunity. Yeah, and if you're, if you're sharing leads and opportunities, maybe you have rewards. And so the portal can also be a place where they can follow up their KPI based on their sales of your products or services. So you also have that piece of the puzzle. And even better is you now have much more visibility on partner sales. This is the one thing that we hear from so many of our customers. They have no visibility. They don't know what's coming in the forecast from their partner network. If they're sharing this information via the portal, you can be much more proactive in planning, forecasting from an operational point of view. Who talks sales, of course, talks about what supports sales, which is marketing. So what can be done in terms of enabling partner with marketing in the portal? Yeah, it's all about sharing marketing collaterals, making it easy for your partners to get collaterals like brochures, data sheets, videos, maybe even price lists. You, they need access to their price list in their currency with their discount level, right? And going even further than that, with the concept of distributed marketing, maybe you wanna provide all of these collaterals and allow your partners to white label it so they can apply their logo, their coloring, and then expose it to their own customers. Now let's move a bit further down the life cycle. So we're gonna go from you know sales purchases and marketing to support, whether it's technical support or other. So how can a portal streamline support with a partner network? It's all about, again, making it easy for your partners to access support. Maybe they have access to knowledge bases, training, videos, so that they can themselves provide support directly to their customers. Or maybe they're just coming in and submitting cases. But what's critical for your company to scale is the concept of tier one, two, and three support. You wanna enable your partners to answer those tier one and tier two support questions and come to you for those tier three. So that self-service component will hopefully deflect a lot of those easy cases, but allow your partners to come in and have a direct access to your support team or your product specialist for those more complex cases. One thing I would add to complement what you said, Louis, uh, beyond streamlining the critical pieces of purchasing, sales, marketing, and support, Companies that are a bit creative can also create a further differentiated experience uh, 
by things like giving more power to their partners. And I'll give you a few examples. Maybe there's different partner benefits and you can get your partners to actually vote on the benefits that's important to them. You can also maybe get your partners to vote on maybe your product or your service roadmap. So you take their insights to help guide your product team because that's market feedback. And those are things that very few companies offer, but you can do that through a, a well-made portal. Another thing I would add is companies should not view a portal as a tool or a system. Right? They sh it shouldn't be viewed as a technical thing. It should be viewed as an experience thing. And so if your company has spent uh, a lot of time and effort designing a great website and navigation or a great mobile app with a great user experience, the same care should be put onto the design and navigation of your portal to make sure your partners find exactly what they need as fast as they can to create stickiness and to make sure they, they come back as uh, many times as they want. Yeah, exactly. It's all about creating partner intimacy and being top of mind with your partners. Now, everything we've talked about, for those familiar with the Salesforce platform, uh, can be done in what we call Salesforce Experience Cloud, which is a module that enables you to create uh, dedicated partner portals, as well as other types of uh, digital experiences. Uh, one of the strengths of Salesforce beyond what we've described is that it is very easy to integrate other systems into Salesforce. And so if you look at your portal, it's not just a portal, it's actually a window into your broader uh, enterprise ecosystem. So everything that's in your CRM, you can expose it through your portal if it has value for your customer, right? And the more personalized it is, the more value it will have. So beyond the CRM uh, exposing things through the portal, what are other pieces that you see in the market that is typically integrated through the CRM and can add value uh, in terms of showing it as personalized information through the portal? Yeah, there's many things, David. Uh, you're right. Two examples, uh, ERPs or accounting systems so that your partners can access invoices, uh, past KPIs in terms of revenue, uh, another, another example would be an LMS. So you have a great uh, learning tool and you want to expose this tool via your par partner portal. You can do that with Salesforce Experience Cloud. So we've covered a lot of best practices, things to do with a portal. So if a company follows these best practices, what are the kind of results they should expect with their partner network? If you're successful at strengthening the relationship with your partner network, it should result in increased revenues for them, increased revenues for your business. And of course, this should allow you to scale your business because you're being much more efficient through the self-service uh, properties of your partner portal.